He never gets enough of gambling and money. nice little song that's uh, Rush Hour and that's by a girl called uh, what's her name uh, Jane Widelin and that's from an album called well it was a single in its own right it's on a, a collection called Drive Time 4 uh, it's good actually good morning uh, Gerald Michael Anderson here the number to ring if you want to contact this programme is 08459 555 678 and many people do send the way they may be and the email address is jerry.anderson at bbc.co.uk and remember uh, emails are for my eyes only so you need not to be shy uh, you never are, of course, sending in the text messages, but we don't want that kind of thing. It's 81771. Uh, just carrying on from uh, our conversation yesterday about uh, golf. Yes. Well, uh, I think it's getting worse. Uh, I think there's two things that we need to uh, establish. One, I said the BBC presenters should stop asking Rory McIlroy stupid questions. Yes, well, we discussed that yesterday. No, but it's really bad. Did you see it again last night? Um, no, where? Mark Sidebottom. No, it was Mark. Oh. Mark Sidebottom. Mark Sidebottom. He was he practically giving Rory McElroy a love bite on the neck. He's not a golf man. That's right. No, he doesn't know what to do. And he's gushing over these people. 
And they're all the same. Stephen Watson's the same. They're all the same. And well, Stephen's a golf man. That's no, but they're, they're embarrassing the fella by saying, mm. what is it like if it would be, be the most wonderful, wonderful yeah, person yes, in the whole yes, world yes. that ever lived? What's it like? Tell me what it's like. What's going to, what, are you, what, are you, what wonderful thing are you going to do tomorrow? And the wee fella, he has no idea what to say to them because what would you, what would you say? Well, you said, yes, yes, yes. I know, but it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Well, what not, was said last night? Well, it was just all that stuff. He was embarrassed. He was up in Hollywood and Mark Sidebottom was g- g- drooling over him. And the fellow was going, ah, 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 as if to say, can't leave me alone. You know, I can't yeah. answer that question. I want you. I can't tell you how wonderful I am. You know, don't be asking me. Ask somebody else. The wee fellow's great, and he's going. They're going to ruin him. They're going to make him hate everybody. Just leave him alone. Just say, what's it like? How do you feel? That's it. All right. Then go away. Can I ask you something? What? Uh, your advice. I'm so angry. Can I ask? I know. What? 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 Settle down. Settle down. Sorry. Come on. Come on. Come on. Settle down. Just make make a nice noise. Eh? Make a nice noise and make me calm down. No, when you're a, nice a baby no- in a cot. What do you mean, baby in a cot? Do you know the way there's a baby in a cot and you go, when you go... Oh, you don't do that to babies in a cot. I do. You do not. I do. I, say, I, say, I, I sing them signatures from well-known BBC programmes. You just say hello to them. Hello. Um, good morning. Hello. How are you? I always say hello. Hello, wee baby. Hello. 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 Well, what would you say to me to calm me down? I'm very hyper today. I would, I would just say to you, come on, settle down. So no, that's not good on, to me. I, I mean, would say, come on up, Minnie. Come on up, come on up, and grand as knee. Come on over there. Come on, I tell you a wee story. I'll tell you about the wee boy. They always always want me to tell them stories about the wee boy. I don't want to hear stories about the wee boy. I always tell them about the wee boy. The wee bad, the bad wee boy that came to my door. The police are listening. You see? <laughs> no, I don't want to hear about. Anyway, that. I was. This is what I want to ask you about. Yes. I thought about this last night. I thought of this last night. Yes. And I thought I would ask you. Go ahead. Now, I want you to hear me out. I'll hear you out. All right, then. Now, I watched The Godfather, part one, Yes. last night. I didn't see it all. I started to watch it at 11 o'clock. Came on at 11 o'clock, much too late. It wasn't over until half past two. Did you have, had you seen it before? Yes, and this is what I want to talk to you about. Yes. Right? And when I watched it, it was a time when, do you remember, you were queuing up. There was queues outside picture houses to see it. Mm-hmm. Right? And when I went to see it, this packed theatre, and I didn't like it. Well, there was no reason to be annoyed at that, because uh, yeah, but you're your own man. No, I didn't like it at all, and I said, what's all this fuss about? But you didn't like the movie after you saw it? Yeah. Or you didn't I, like I, the, the, the sight of the queue? No, not the queue. I, I, I didn't like it when I was sitting there, and I was watching it, and I said, this is awful. I said, this, I have another two hours of this to go. You know, well, uh, it is a bit slow. Right? Yeah. But... This is what I want to ask you. This is yeah. what I want to talk to you about. Yes. Last night when I watched it, I was sitting in the comfort of my own home, mm-hmm. on my own, and I could hear it. <laughs> yes. Now, you have a problem with hearing. Not b- b- I don't b- have b- a real yeah, problem yeah, with No, but hearing. with bands, the bands, the loudness. You, my you're, hearing you're, you're has been, my impaired. left ear is slightly impaired. Yes, yes, yes. I know that. But, uh, but I haven't got great hearing either. So what? I, I, what? <laughs> So, I'm wonder. I'm sitting watching this film last night, and, I, and I'm yeah. saying, "This is great! Mm-hmm. What a great film!" Yeah. Why is it on so late? And I know I won't see it now. I'm not. No way. I would sit up to half past two to watch this. But this is a very interesting film. It needs your attention. And I th- I'm thinking, was it my hearing, my bad hearing? Because all I could hear was guys beside you coughing and eating crisps and rattling bags and making noise. And the guy wanting out the toilet, walking past you to get out the toilet, pulling and girls' hair, back in again, and people coughing and you know, and you couldn't hear, especially Marlon Brando, as you know the role you had to listen to every word he said <laughs> yeah all that and, you, and as you know the first hour it's the story is just all unfolding story unfolds yeah you know and and yeah got to hear, listen to the names you've got to hear oh what what when he's sending him off to this and he's sending people off to do contracts and and make them an offer they can't refuse I couldn't hear. I realise now that I couldn't hear the film. A lot to do too with the cinema in which you saw the film. You I, see? I, had, an, I had an experience with so this. I'd like to apologise to Marlon Brando. Ah, too late now, he's dead. But, you know, he went to his grave wondering why you never did that. That's what I'm thinking. One of the things that, that you have to be aware of is the quality of the sound in some of the cinemas, of course, we being, yes. us being underprivileged here now, in the North West. Can I just add this? You recommended another film, and I went to see it, and I didn't like it, that 
Captain Sensible or something, or Captain in the Islands, or Captain. In I the think you're referring to Master and Commander. That's it. That's it. That's and not I, Captain Sensible. Well, I, it was you know, I knew it was seafaring in some way. Well, Captain Sensible isn't the seafaring. No, Captain, the Captain bit. Uh, and there was no Captain in it. It's Master and Commander. Master, well, you know what I mean. It was a seafaring film. I, Patrick O'Brien yarn. Right. Okay. And, uh, and maybe I didn't hear it. I know. Because remember, I was complaining about the man two mm-hmm. seats in front of me eating mm-hmm. a large packet of crisps. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering how many bloody crisps has he got in that bag. When's he going to finish? But you didn't say, Ruddy. No, I didn't, exactly. But you, so, didn't, you substituted that word because the real word, we can't say it. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm wondering, is it, it, is, it the no, noise? It's, is it the the no, it's I, a lot I, to do with Will you let me explain? Well, okay, I've now come to you now because you're a bit of a social worker. I understand this. Because I had a similar experience myself with a particular movie, and funnily enough, starring the same star, Russell Crowe. Uh, I have always been, well, a fan of Roman history ever since I was a small child. Many visits to Pompeii, many visits to Herculaneum, many visits to the Palatine Hill, many visits to the Pantheon, many visits to the Colosseum, and studied it in great depth. And I was, uh, at the time when the movie Gladiator came out, I was very much looking forward to it because I had read that it wasn't a bad representation of life at that time. You know, it wasn't the usual crap, you know, right. Victor Mature wearing a watch. Yeah. So I went to see that in a well-known cinema, which I shall not name. I couldn't hear anything. Mm-hmm. All I heard was... <laughs> and I said, what? There's something wrong with me. I can't really hear anything. I, you know, I can hear stuff, but it's all a big... <laughs> Yeah. Well, during the fight scenes, and and people would say things you wouldn't hear it. You mm-hmm. go, <laughs> 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 That's good, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that good? But how do we get round that? Do we ban people no, from, from no, cinemas? No, it's not that. You see, it's it's the sound the quality itself. See, a lot of the cinemas yes. they don't spend the money on the on the speakers. And what they do is, they see, the modern sound is so complicated that sometimes they try and squeeze it through with cheap speakers. Right. So you go to a cinema that's not a hundred percent. And you don't get the sound that's intended. It's all kind of like squeezed. You know? It's like getting eight men and squeezing them into a, a phone booth. You know what right. I mean? It's not yes. the same. But anyway, I went to see... I, I, I wouldn't give up on it. And I was in London one time, and I said to myself, I'll go and see that gladiator. And it was one of the Odeon jobs, you know, the big jobs. And I went in, it was wonderful. It was great. The you could hear it. Absolutely everything. And I said, that's the movie I wanted to see, and I spent money on it and didn't see it. Anyway, listen. Back so to I'm wondering, is that is that part of my is, is that my problem? You know, why I'm grumpy and tetchy about things. No, and, I think and, it's and genetic. Tolerable. No, I think it's genetic. Is it my hearing? No, 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 no. no it's genetic. All right. No. Uh, anyway, never mind that. Uh, golfers. A man comes back to this. That was a good old row I started, says Jonathan, who sent me an email yesterday with my rant about unfriendly golf clubs. He sent a, a, a rant yesterday. Remember, I read it out, mm-hmm. and uh, people reacted to it. But of course, you will get the blame, Jerry, even though you were just reading out an email. Sorry about that, puppet chin. And I think you got you, I think I got you in trouble one time before with creationist Christians. Yes, you did indeed. But I can take it. P.S. Here are some other golf things that irritate me, and probably Mr. Coyle as well. Here, you'll probably know about this. This makes little sense to me. Right. When a right. player takes a tee shot mm-hmm. on a par four or five, some clown will invariably shout, In the hole! Oh, that's awful. The Americans started that. Did they start that? Yeah. And the did Americans people start. start doing that here? They started to do it here now too as well. But I think they're trying to, 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 to stop it. Well, a person takes a tee shot on a par four or five. Mm. Why, why would a person shout in the hole? Because yeah. there's no way the yes, person's going to get a hole in so one. That's stupid. Yeah. As yeah. I just said, oh, you'll never do that. Get in the hole. That's in the hole. Oh, get in the hole. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Yeah, it's awful. Also, your sports journalists will say such and such carded a 69. Oh, that's all right. No, he doesn't like that expression. He yeah. says, because carded is not a real word. It's like saying Barcelona scoreboarded three <laughs> goals to one. He's a pathetic wee shite, he says. He says, make them stop. Okay, Continue well. on, he says. <laughs> 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 oh, dear, dear. No. What a, mm. It's quarter to 11. And so it is. <laughs> <laughs> she came from Greece. She had a thirst for knowledge. She studied sculpture at St. Martin's College. That's where I caught her eye. She told me that her dad was loaded. I said, in that case, I'll have a rum and Coca-Cola. She said, fine. And in 30 seconds time, she said, I want to live like common people. I want to do whatever common people do. I want to sleep with common people. I want to sleep with common people like you. 
well, what else could I do? I said, I'll see what I can do. I took her to a supermarket. I don't know why, but I had to start it somewhere. So it started there. I said, pretend you've got no money. She just laughed and said, oh, you're so funny. I said, yeah? Well, I can't see anyone else smiling in here. Are you sure? You want to live like common people? You want to see whatever common people see? You want to sleep with common people? You want to sleep with common people like me? But she didn't understand. She just smiled and held my hand. Ran to flat above a shop. Cut your hair and get a job. Smoke some flags and play some pool. Pretend you never went to school. But still you never get it right. When you're lying in bed at night. Watching roaches climb the wall. If you called your dad, he could stop it all. Like common people, you'll never do whatever common people do. You'll never fail like common people. You'll never watch your life slide out of you and dance and drink and screw. Cause there's nothing, because else, there's nothing to do. else to do. Like a dog lying in a corner. They'll bite you and never warn you. Look out. They'll tear your insides out. Because everybody hates a tourist. Because everybody hates a tourist. Especially one who thinks it's all such a lie. Yeah, and the chip stains grease will come out in the back. You will never you will understand, never understand how, it how it feels to live your life, to live your life with, with no meaning or control. Or control and with nowhere left, left to go. go. You're amazed that they, they exist. exist. And they burn and they so burn bright so while you can only wonder why. Rent a flat to buy a shop. Cut your hair and get a job. Smoke some fags and play some pool. Pretend you never went to school. school. But still, you'll but still never, you'll never get, get it right. Because when you laid in bed at night, watching roaches climb the wall, if you called your dad, he could stop it all. Yeah. You'll never live like common people. You'll never do what, you'll never common, do people what people common people do. People do. That's William Shatner, of course. Uh, common people, look, it's uh, 11 minutes to 11 o'clock. Uh, the Antiques Roadshow is due to visit us uh, next week. And uh, Judith Miller is uh, on the line. Uh, good morning, Judith. How are you? Good morning. I'm extremely well, thank you. Nice to talk to you. Good. Well, we're looking forward to coming to Castle Cool. Castle Cool in Enniskillen, of course. It is indeed. Yes, yeah, so I've never been there. I've been to Belfast many, many times, but I've never been to Enniskillen, so I'm very much looking forward to it. And you're very much an expert, Judith. You uh, co-founded the uh, Miller's Antiques a Price Guide, and uh, you're very much... A, and, and you'll be there yourself, of course. I will be, yes. I'm looking forward to it. I'm um, doing the, the miscellaneous table, um, which is lovely. I sometimes do ceramics, but I'm doing whatever anybody wants to bring. I, and it would be lovely to get some nice stories. Okay, we, that's that's the that's that's the, uh, the the appeal I think of the, the the two things that I always look for in the program, and I suppose I'm no different than any, anyone else. I like to see the little woman coming in and bring something out of her bag and being told it's worth twenty grand. <laughs> and I also I like somebody who comes in with something and just tells a wonderful story, maybe an old seafaring story about her great great grandfather. That that's the kind of thing that brings the program alive, isn't it? Because that's what it's about. I mean, these objects can tell us fantastic stories about people's background and people's, you know, as you say, their great grandfather went to China, in the, you know, in the 19th century or something. Yeah. You know, it, and it really does that. That's really important. What I love sometimes is you get somebody brings in a box with various things in it, and quite a few of the things are not worth much money at all, but they like them, and then and then you suddenly pick something out and you go, but this, on the other hand, is extremely rare, and it's <laughs> rare, and, and and you love it because people's faces, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's great when they have no idea that what they have is valuable. And no, it's not it's not a mercenary thing, but you know they're surprised at what they. 
they think is an old piece of junk that is probably maybe worth, you know, maybe a thousand quid, which would be a, well, a fortune right. to them. Yeah. And I always love, he'll always say to me, and, and, you know, when you tell somebody something's worth a lot of money, you know, and they say, oh, I'd never sell it. <laughs> but do they mean it? <laughs> <laughs> they probably sell it the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll, you'll be in Castle Cool, OK? And uh, the, door, the doors and are open. I, yeah. Yeah, if anybody's still got things, they're, they're in, I mean, say you've got some, a big piece of furniture, which is obviously a bit tricky to, to if, you, if you want to phone the BBC um, in Bristol, yes. um, you know, and you'd like somebody to come and have a look at it, and we can maybe arrange transport for it to Enniskillen for you. Yeah, that's a, main, that's, that's a good point to make, actually, if there's something large that you, you wouldn't think of bringing because of how, how on earth will I get it down there. I, I've got a number here. It's 0117-974-2395. That's 0117-974-2395. Nine seven four two three nine five, or there's a, there's an email antiques uh, dot roadshow at bbc dot co dot uk, and uh, uh, I've got this number. Anyone who doesn't catch that, uh, just give us a ring and we'll give it to you. And uh, it says that the doors are open from nine thirty until four thirty, so anyone in the queue by four thirty will definitely get to see an expert. Can you guarantee that, Judith? We always do. I mean, sometimes we look at the queue and think, oh my goodness, are we going to make this? But every single person that gets there will definitely be seen. So we'll, we'll have a chat with whatever you've got to, to bring along. And, and, you know, if you've got something that, you know, you think's really interesting, come along quite early and, and you know, you never know, we might get you on camera too. Is there any particular areas of uh, Britain or Northern Ireland that you expect to uh, get a particular type of object, or is that a, an unusual question? Well, we, you know, obviously in Ireland, I mean, you know, we we would hope to get some nice Irish furniture. Yeah, of course, yeah. Silver, you know, yeah. glass, obviously, but and hopefully some little thing. You know, it's always nice to find some some folk art, something that's that's local to the area is always really lovely. Um, but you know. We've we've been such a trading nation for for mm. years, so we could find anything in Enniskill, and we could find some Oriental things, which of course are, are really really hot at the moment. I mean, mm. uh, the Oriental market has really really been very very strong. So, you know, we might find that, but you just never know. People might have some really nice first editions of, of books. You just never know. That's right, and I imagine you know because of Ireland being what it is, you might uh, you'd be expected to maybe perhaps unearth some what we call relics of old decency. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from the old houses you know the way they, they've been in a decline but a lot of stuff you know just kind of circulates around probably more here than anywhere else I would imagine well actually but, but I mean where I come from in the Scottish borders yeah. very much too I mean I, I remember my great auntie Lizzie I mean she when she married she was an understairs maid in, in, in what we used to call the big hoose the big hoose uh, you know and she was understairs <laughs> and she married the footman and she was given a present by the lady of the house you know and this was I mean I have it to this day myself now but uh -huh. you know this was her pride possession you know and, and I think that's the same thing. You know, there's lots of, of things that, that sort of filtered through the society, as we say. Uh -huh. Well, so we encourage people to come along just only out of curiosity. If you have some object at home that you're curious about, doesn't necessarily, you know, it's not necessarily a thing about value or anything. It's just about, you know, finding stuff out. And yeah. so, yeah. Find out its history. We'll tell you when it was made, where it was made, and hopefully a little bit, a bit of history about it. Okay, so that's uh, Castle Cool in the Skillen between 9.30 and 4.30, and if you're there by 4.30, you will definitely get to see an expert, so you, you won't go home disappointed. And I see that there's a bit of an innovation here at the other end of the scale. Uh, BBC's first click team will also be at the Antiques Roadshow, helping people to try out iPads and showing people how to get online. Exactly. Well, I mean, I think this, nowadays, you know, with so much online, I think we're, we're trying to encourage people that, you know, you can actually find out a tremendous amount online. I mean, you know, genuinely, there's nothing like, with antiques and, and collectibles, there's nothing like letting some of us, you know, see it and touch it and, you know, be able to tell you a bit more. But there's a tremendous amount of information online and we, we, we all want to encourage people to use it. Especially the old antiques who come along, teach them how to get on the iPads. Exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I had to do it myself. So. <laughs> are you antique yourself, are you? I don't, I'm not after your age. I think I'm priceless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very rare. I'm rare. <laughs> anyway, there's a number of people that want to find out about that first click thing. It's a 08... 00-150-950. So that's all those numbers. 08-00-150-950. And for the Antique Road Show, 0117-974-2395. But you can just turn up. Just turn up. Absolutely. Come and bring something along. Or even, you know, if, if you don't have anything and you want to just see what we do and what, come along in the afternoon a bit later and, and, you know, you'll see how it all happens. You can just go and browse around if you like. You can, absolutely. OK, Judith, thank you very much and hope you have a great... Well, by, when is it? We didn't even say when we it did, is. Oh, it's Thursday. 
Thursday, not not today, of course, next Thursday. Next Thursday, a week today. We're flying over on, on the Wednesday and, and we're, it's Thursday, as you say, 9.30 to 4.30. And will Fiona Bruce be there? She will. She's that'll, gorgeous, you know. That'll bring the men in. That bring, it, it certainly <laughs> improved the number of men that are quite happy to be brought along. But she'll come and see you too as well. I hope so. All right, then. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much, Judith. Nice to talk with you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> That's Judith Miller, Antique Roadshow, Castle Cool, Inniskillen, next Thursday. Bring your bits and pieces. It's a situation, the situation's good. Here's a wishing well. Here's a penny for any thought it is that makes you smile. Every diamond dream. Everything that brings love and happiness to your life. Here's a rabbit's foot. Take it when you go. So you. Because of what you are, even in the deepest dark, because your reign is true. And if I could only have one wish, darling, then it would be this: love and happy. That's Mark Knopfler and Emmy Lou Harris. A song written by Kimmy Rhodes. Uh, we've been asked to uh, play her version, but this one's quite good. It's called Love and Happiness from an album called All the Road Running. Mark Knopfler and Emmy Lou Harris. Back after the news. to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave. This is BBC Radio Ulster. It's 11 o'clock and with the BBC News, this is Keith Burnside. A report into the abuse and murder of a three-year-old boy from Wolverhampton has found that child care agencies missed opportunities to intervene even though his killers were known to them. Christopher Taylor and Kayleigh Bolan were looking after Ryan Lovell Hancock's when he died from a brain injury in 2008. 
Our correspondent Anthony Bartram said more than a dozen agencies failed to identify that Ryan's mother needed help to look after him. The most pressing concern and the most pressing need from Ryan's mother, Amy, was some help with childcare. She was a single mother who was really struggling and in the end she had to entrust her child to two people, albeit she grew up with one of them, two people whose social services, had they known and had they investigated, would have deemed them entirely inappropriate. Further talks are to take place today in a bid to avert more violence in East Belfast. Yesterday, loyalist paramilitaries and senior Republicans held discussions following two nights of rioting which left several people injured. Rival groups were involved in a standoff for several hours last night, but there were no serious incidents. Community leaders on both sides said the situation had been well managed. A news photographer shot on the leg on Tuesday night has been discharged from hospital. The Agriculture Minister, Michelle O'Neill, is urging Northern Ireland vegetable growers to take advantage of a compensation package for farmers affected by the German E. coli outbreak. The European Union is making £210 million available to producers hit by the scare. The scheme applies to products withdrawn from sale between the 18th and 30th of June. The outbreak killed 22 people. The cost of providing cars for executive ministers and civil servants in Northern Ireland has cost more than £1.3 million over the past three years. In a written answer to an Assembly member, the Finance Minister, Sammy Wilson, also said a new fleet of 13 ministerial vehicles would add £252,000 to the bill. Now, sports, here's Grant Cameron. Northern Ireland manager Nigel Worthington would be happy for his players to be part of a British team at the 2012 Olympics, despite the Irish FA's opposition. Worthington says players should not be criticised for wanting to be involved, but adds that he also understands the IFA's position. Confirmation of Ashley Young's reported £17 million move from Aston Villa to Manchester United is expected later. Gareth Mabon is one under par after 12 holes of his opening round at golf's BMW Invitational in Munich, seven shots off the lead. Britain's Laura Robson takes on 2004 winner Maria Sharapova in the second round of Wimbledon this afternoon. Six-time men's champion Roger Federer, Leighton Hewitt and defending women's champion Serena Williams are also in action. On to the weather and with a wet outlook, Cecilia Daly. Showers will continue to develop, which means the sunnier gaps will become more short-lived. Some heavy showers are expected before lunchtime, which will continue into the early afternoon. And there's a small risk of thunder. Temperatures in the sunshine will reach 16 or 17 Celsius at best. This evening will become dry with some sunshine returning in most places and a dry, chilly night will follow. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. There are no problems or delays on the roads in or around Belfast this morning. Looking at roadworks and in Jordanstown, the Jordanstown Road is closed between the Shore Road and the Circular Road until the end of August. A diversion is in place via White Abbey Village. And resurfacing continues on part of the A29 Cookstown Road near Moneymore. That's from 9.30 until 4.30 each day. On to flights sent at Belfast International Airport, the 20 past 12 Liverpool arrival has been delayed until 20 to 1. And the 2 o'clock Alicante flight is expected at 25 past 3. Eileen Moyna reporting. Travel News on BBC Radio Ulster. On Talkback with Wendy Austin today, Facebook follies. Why do people lose their run of themselves on social networking sites? We've seen the first conviction in the country for posting offensive comments, specifically that Gregory Campbell deserved a bullet in the head for his views on the Bloody Sunday inquiry. What does this mean for free speech? Will we see more prosecutions? Call me on that 08459 555 678. Also today, should we get out of Afghanistan right now? The Americans are on the exit road. Is it worth one more life? Would leaving be an insult to those soldiers who've died there? And... School's out for two celebrated head teachers. They're both retiring, counting down the days. Will they miss the classroom? What's in store for them now? Find out and join the debate on Talk Back at 12. Alice Cooper on Talk Back. Would you have believed it? I blame the peace process. Uh, this is a very special weekend for Derry Stoke London Derry, the opening of the Peace Bridge. We'll be talking about that in a few moments. Into the night. 
something. She makes a gesture with her hand and mouths what she wants. She wants to make a connection. A certain kind of connection. No, this is not about something from the black market. This is about no questions. This is about smoke and sweat and beats. This is about no message. Take your partner by the hand. He's a woman, she's a man. What's so hard to understand? Land. Take 
Well, we came across a little town about five miles south of Mino. A pretty little place. Population, 500. Well, he rounded everybody up in the center of town. Men at the front, women at the back. Standard procedure. Didn't want any trouble. Sort of. We want your water. Seven trucks with us that day. Two of them were full, and one of them was used for uh, recreational purposes. Well, the plan was we fill up the remaining four trucks, steal what we could, leave town, head on to the next one. As far as I was concerned, only there for the one. Jim started shooting. He killed four of the men and three of the women. I found out later he wasted eight shots in total. Well, then I had to use one on him. Well, his brother Jake didn't take too kindly to this and took a shot at me. That's a song that's not heard half often enough. That's uh, from a band called Water Ballad from uh, Enniskillen, Corrigan. A band called Corrigan from Enniskillen. And before that was Robbie Robertson from an album called uh, Contact from the Underworld World of Red Boy. That was a track called uh, Take Your Partner by the Hand. I'm joined by Mo Durkin from Ilex. Good morning, Mo. Good morning, Jerry. What a great day this is. This is a fantastic day because we're now leading up to the big party which gets underway Friday evening right through to Saturday night. Sunday um, night. Sunday night, of course, uh, the Peace peace Bridge has been opened officially on that. Mr Coyle says he's already been over it. Can you say that this is a lie? Uh, I, I would think that's most definitely um, uh, more than a lie, yes. Uh, I can guarantee he hasn't <laughs> been on the bridge. But um, everybody in the city will be able to get across the bridge, I should think, by about quarter to three on Saturday afternoon. The opening ceremony will kick in about two o'clock. Mm-hmm. 
Well, the interesting thing about the bridge, and you know, people who aren't from Derry, and most of the people listening today aren't from this city, and they're probably wondering, what's all this about? You see, it's a very, very unusual thing because uh, Derry is a strange place, and I was talking about this a while ago. Uh, a while ago. Uh, it's actually divided by the river, uh, mm-hmm. politically, socially, economically, for all kinds of different reasons. Yeah. So the idea of having a footbridge like this, it, it, there's nowhere else that has done this because this bridge is not... It's probably the first bridge ever built in Ireland that wasn't built primarily for the idea of getting from A to B. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, the Peace um, Bridge, as it's yeah. called, is being funded by the European Peace Programme. And there's a very particular um, initiative there called Shared Space. Yeah. And the Shared Space initiative was exactly set up to do what you've just said, was to uh, fund projects that bring together communities that have been formally divided. That, and that could be physically, geographically, socially, culturally, emotionally divided. Mm-hmm. Uh, and as you've said over time, particularly with our recent past, um, um, the river foil, which is one of our undisputed assets in the city, it has also become an ethnic divider whereby largely one side of the river has been seen as populated by one community yes, right. and the other side of the river populated by the other community. So this is not a traffic bridge. It is actually um, because traffic bridges get people from A to B and they're nothing to do with socialising. Yeah. This is a bridge which incidentally will have seating. It's actually going to be a rendezvous. It's going to be a meeting point. It's a shared space across that important, eth- what was that important ethnic divider. Um, and it's actually going to be a shared public space for everybody to meet and get together on. And it, it, it'll, be, uh, it'll be used by pedestrians and cyclists. Both, both pedestrian and cyclist. Which is a great idea. Absolutely. Now, let's just explain to people, on one side, on the West Bank, there's the Guildhall Square, which people would be familiar with. That's basically the centre of the city. And then the bridge spans the foil to... Ebrington Barracks, which yes. is a very interesting place. Yes. That's a mid-19th century army barracks, which yeah. was used right up until recently. That's right. And th- there's a piazza there yeah. that's bigger than Trafalgar Square. Yes. Tell um, us about that. It's very interesting. I mean, we always talk about Derry being the walled city because obviously we have got our unique walls, which were completed by 1618. Mm-hmm. What a lot of people will now see this coming weekend is they're actually going to see that we're probably the only walled city I'm aware of that has not one but two sets of historic walls. And as people walk off the bridge, they're actually going to be walking in through the city's second set of historic walls which were completed in 1841 Mm -hmm. and that's part of what's known as the Star Fort. Um, Since 1841 there has been an army base there it was extended a couple of times to its current footprint of 26 acres but by far the most interesting part of Ebrington is that part which has got a huge parade ground. Uh, The Star Fort itself is probably uh, about 10 acres in um, uh, measurement but the centrepiece of it is a, a f- just over a five acre parade ground which would have normally been used by soldiers for parading and exercise but we're now currently um, redeveloping that to be the largest public space in the city. Um, for those of you you've said obviously a lot of your listeners aren't in uh, Derry but um, Donegal Square in Belfast is a fair size. This square is actually larger mm-hmm. than Donegal Square and it is actually larger than Trafalgar Square. So it actually will be a a very important uh, focus for arts, culture and tourism for the city. And that's, as I say, that redeveloped entire project will be finished by the end of this calendar year. All kinds of plans for that. Jude Law was over here the other day. What was he doing here? He was because uh, on uh, Midsummer's Day next year, that's June 21st, 2012, um, they're going to um, kickstart what's known as the uh, Cultural Olympiad. Um, when they first started the um, Olympics back in ancient times, they, they weren't just about physical fitness. They were also about um, cultural um, um, excellence. Mm-hmm. And, and so one of the key things which um, the London Olympics is doing is that they're, they're re- resurrecting the idea of a cultural Olympiad. So you're, they're going to have um, starting on June the 21st, they're having cultural events in um, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland leading up to the start of the 2012 Olympics on the 27th of July. But the number one event to kickstart the Cultural Olympiad um, for the London um, Olympics is actually happening on uh, the parade ground in Ebrington mm. next year and it's known as the Peace One concert and you're right Jude Law and uh, Jeremy Gilly are both behind that You see and that all these things we'll be telling people about all these things some wonderful things planned yeah. coming up to the City of Culture of course yeah. 2013 and I wanted to you're also going to be launching phase one of Mute Meadow Yes Now this is going to be the largest public artwork in the whole of Ireland 
That's right. Uh, Mute Meadow um, will, along with the um, Peace Bridge, they will forever change the look and feel of the riverfront because um, uh, the, these are uh, 40 twin uh, pillars uh, which at night time uh, light up using low energy uh, lighting. But uh, they basically are going to give this look of a field of light and they will reflect off the river foil at night time. They're going to be very beautiful. Now, uh, as part of the celebrations for the weekend, we're going to have uh, fireworks. Everybody loves fireworks here. Mm -hmm. So 10.30 on Saturday night, we're having a fireworks uh, spectacular. Directly after that, uh, that will then be followed by the first lighting of Mute Meadow. So it's worthwhile anyone not from here to show up on, on the weekend, have a, oh, have a bit of a weekend. Yeah. Most definitely, because apart from all of that, um, um, we have two community festivals happening. Uh, the beauty of the, the, the Peace Bridge is, it, as I said, it's a shared space in its own right, but it's opening up the city to other shared spaces where which we can all enjoy. So on the the water side, we have Saint, in St. Columns Park, there's the um, Carnival of Colours, mm-hmm. which has got a, a circus big top and all kinds of family fun and activities activity from um, um, Saturday right through Sunday. Then you would go through Ebrington onto the Peace Bridge. Guildhall Square, we have a market on, also staging for live acts. And then right up into the Craft Village. And in the Craft Village is the One World Festival as well. And they have got all sorts of acts between Bollywood and Persian dancers and uh, singers from just about every cultural background you can imagine. This is big thinking, Mo. Yeah. And it's all been brought uh, about by basically the basic core of the idea is the City of Culture 2013, which has kick-started everything, apart from the Peace Bridge, of course, mm. which before which before that. And this is big thinking for Derry. And this, it's, the city's getting off its knees, isn't yes, it? Yes, definitely. It's getting off its knees and it's punching big. Yeah. It's punching... A, uh, I wish you all the best. Uh, you, the, the interesting part about that bridge... Uh, but the river, now I was born in Sackville Street, which is beside the river. I was brought up and I was never on it. Do you know why? Amazing. I thought it belonged to somebody else. My goodness. But, that's the, <laughs> the, but you never felt this ownership. Yeah, that's true. And I was uh, never on the river. Uh, but you know the one, the, the one main thing about this bridge is everybody feels that they own it. And exactly. I mean, for about a year and a half since it started, everybody wants to know who's the first on the bridge, who's going to be the first on the bridge. Uh, he said it was him. Uh, uh, Sean Coyle, no. Come on, isn't he a liar? Uh, um, well, he's not telling the truth. Come on. <laughs> a, a terminological inexactitude. Come on, admit that you lied. What are you talking about? You said you were the first, you'd been over the bridge already. Mo says you haven't. Uh, I No comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wise man. Just to, say, just to say, Jerry, in actual fact, technically the first people on the bridge will be 600 children. Yeah. Um, and that's eight, children, uh, eight pupils from every school right across the Derry City Council area. Um, there'll be a bit of a performance going on there um, and uh, you'll all see that on Saturday. But um, at the same time, there's going to be a choral piece um, has been um, commissioned. Um, Northern Ireland composer Ian Wilson yeah. has very specially composed a piece piece of music called The Bridge and that will be performed by a cross community uh, choir at the end of the bridge with um, uh, under the direction of Donald Doherty and they are going to be singing this specially commissioned piece but the children on the bridge will also be part of that singing uh, so uh, you'll see it's it's pretty um, um, let's say interactive uh, this bridge is owned by the community and the beauty yeah. is everybody really feels that they do own it you see and you can't do this kind of thing in Belfast because you know the way it's different there because there's all kinds of little areas and you've, you've seen what's going on this past mm. couple of days you cross the street you're in a different area but this actually the river was always a boundary but now it's actually it's easily bridged yeah it it's is easily bridged it is and it's actually effectively extending the city centre exactly uh, and the beauty about it is too anybody um um, who doesn't know uh, the city would know that would, the, there's uh, the largest park we have is St. Columns Park it's mm. actually 79 acres it's massive but it's, it's very underutilised because an awful lot of people have never actually been in that park and I this weekend been, I, I think I've been in it twice I think I've been in it twice yeah. this weekend's going to change that because it's opening up our own city for our own enjoyment well well done and uh I hope it's going to be a great weekend and okay. get, uh, some very fine musicians going to do a few songs for us after this. Uh, so thank you for coming. Okay, in. Also, may, may I say that Radio 4 listeners can hear coverage of the opening starting at 10 to 2 on Saturday on 93.1 FM. And we're encouraging everyone from all parts to come up. Spend oh, the most weekend. Most definitely. Most Spend definitely. the weekend. Thank you, Mo Durkin. Okay, thanks, thank Jerry. You. Some
That's Stevie Nicks, of course. That's a song called uh, Love Bird. Uh, as part of the celebration of... Uh, the well, Paddy it was, was asked to do a solo spot in left field with Billy Bragg. Yeah. And then I was invited along by Billy Bragg as a guest. Uh-huh. And then somebody else who booked us for a festival later on in England in July heard we were there and booked both of us to sing uh, over in the acoustic field. Now, on a small stage, while the big acts are changing over, we'll be on in between. And so now the stakes are up for me. I have to sing. I was hoping to go and chat <laughs> and drink wine all weekend, but anyway. Are you sure when you got that letter, are you sure it wasn't Glasgow Berry? <laughs> well, Paddy, are you sure? You... I mean, were you wearing your glasses when you saw that? <laughs> well, uh, no, they, what they did was they gave uh, Diana a ticket and not this thing. <laughs> no, it actually all started, Jerry. Uh, there was a guy called Steve from Armagh who heard Billy Bragg jeans getting played on your own show. That's right. He yeah. posted it on the Billy Bragg forum and uh, and Billy Bragg's website, and then Billy Bragg actually went on and heard the song, like, and it all kicked off in there, like, you know, that's kind of really kind of built the relationship from there, and that's why. Is that right? So I didn't know that. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's all down to yourself. So even even so, by going on this show, you can get the Glastonbury. There you go, exactly. <laughs> what do you want to do something now? Between, or, or do you, are you going to do something all together? I'm going to, uh, John Deary, how are you, John? Are you okay? Great, Jerry. Hi, great and, to see uh, you. Tell me about your band and how are things going for you? Things are going great. We were playing Black Box in Belfast last night, so we're, we're only coming around from that, you know. But uh-huh. um, it was great, brilliant. Everything's going well and recording a new album, hopefully, in July. So Excellent. Uh, keep keep you posted about that. Oh, Give yeah. you a copy of that and stuff. Please do. And Paul Casey, you're no stranger. I mean, you you are you still working on Chris Ray's album? No, it's it's done now. That's going to be released in September. So, what about of, your own stuff? Are you doing your own stuff? Yeah, I'm working away just uh, with a company in America writing kind of uh, music cues for some TV shows. So I'm loving that. I, I have too. a feeling he might be doing that just for money. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> so. If I could do that long term, that's the deal. Oh, no, that's, that's, that's a great thing. And, and you, you've actually had some of your music used in some uh, television shows. Yeah, that, kind of came, that all kind of led to this. You know, I, I got some songs played on some American shows and I got a publishing deal and this publisher's kind of worked a few things and we got a, I went to meet them at the start of this year and there was a company from America who liked what I was doing and he yeah. writes for a lot of big American TV shows so he gave me a, a show to try out like. 
And Isn't that a I mean, it's amazing that the three of you from three different bands, yeah. basically, well, you're, you're on your own, basically, and Paul, uh, sorry, uh, John and uh, Paddy and Diane, you're all doing so well, like, it's fantastic, and you all started out from humble beginnings. <laughs> 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 well, do you want to do things, in, so, uh, we have time for about <coughs> two or three, I think, do you want to do something together or individually, or who wants to kick off? I'm sure we'll kick off. Paul, you're going to play a bit of, yep. play a bit of guitar with right, us. Right, tell us what you're going to do. We're going to do a wee song. It's called uh, A37 Blues. And right. uh, if anybody's unfamiliar with A37, it's a road that runs between Lamavari and Corain. Yes. And I lived in a wee cottage there one time. And <coughs> one one rainy day, I was particularly pissed off with American presidents and Audi drivers. Can, so he, can he say piss? No. No, you can't, oh, sorry, say that. can't say that. I was peeved off with American <laughs> presidents and Audi drivers. So I wrote this song called The A37 Blues. All right, go okay. ahead. Okay. I'm staring through the mirror at the window to the street below. Spying on a postman celebrating being alive. I'm stuck in this room humming this tune all over. If it wasn't for the dirty rain, I'd be outside. Well, I guess it's true what they told me. We deserve everything we get. I'm living on the A37 and I'm never gonna get away. That was uh, Paddy Nash and Diane Greer uh, from the Happy Enchiladas. And uh, Paul Casey would like me to point out it was him playing the guitar and not the kazoo. <laughs> 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 so it's music all the way today. We'll have another few songs. And tomorrow, as a special day as well, on this programme, we'll be kicking off the Open House Festival. We'll be doing an outside broadcast from McHugh's Bar in Belfast tomorrow. There'll be some great bands. And there are some great musicians and, and bands here today. Right, who wants to go next? 
Oh, listen, uh, the reason why we're, one of the reasons why we're doing this, you're going to have a special, uh, I suppose, uh, celebratory gig. Yeah. In San Dino's, is it? In Derry. When is that? Next Thursday, the 30th of uh, June. And uh, it's going to be myself, Patty, and Diane. And John, and, uh, it's going to be just a great night of music to celebrate the, the new Peace Bridge. Okay, so all the people who are here today will be yeah. there on that night, next Thursday night in San Dino's, which is the, well, it's a small primary. It's not, no, it's, it's a bigger gig. I keep yeah. thinking, you see, San Dino's used to be a small kind of revolutionary bar. <laughs> and, well, and no, but I mean Mexican, you know, not this one. <laughs> and it used to be kind of a little place where you'd, you'd, you'd smoke a cigarette, wouldn't you? Mm-hmm. And then there was a place upstairs, it's bigger now, so it's a, a larger gig, isn't it? Oh, it's a great venue. It's great. Yeah, you'd be all there next Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Okay, right, who's next? I'll go next. Okay. <laughs> what are you going to do? This is a song called uh, Different Planet. It's a wee song. Oh, I like this. I heard this before. It's brilliant, beautiful. Yeah, it's a song about hope, so Paddy's going to join me. Are you going to join in, Paddy? Yeah. Dad, don't, don't play your kazoo this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you were very good at the start. <laughs> don't be mixing those things up. <laughs> Lord, it's a different planet now And it's still round But it don't feel right somehow It's a different planet now But we've gone Changed it forever See, my neighbors got a different view So my sister live under the same sky as you I'm not pointing my finger to blame Cause all I'm trying to say Is that we're all just the same It's a different planet now And it's still round But it don't feel right somehow It's a different planet now But we've gone Changed it forever Yeah, but maybe we changed it for the good so we just gotta see all the reasons why we should try to learn from the past there's no stopping now it's all moving too fast a different planet now and it's still round but it don't feel right somehow it's a different planet now but we've gone changed it forever it's as crazy for you as it is for me where do we go now where does it live to do cause our father's dreams lie in shame for our children make sure we don't do it all again it's a different planet now and it's still around but it don't feel right somehow Different planet now, but we've gone. Yeah, we've changed it forever. Daddy down. Yeah. But it's all come about. We failed, me and you. Through the trenches down to our children's schools the great silver birds are now weapons of the sky Are we trying to live or are we just failing to survive? It's a different planet now And it's still round but it don't feel right somehow It's a different planet now But we've gone, yeah we changed it forever Lord, it's a different planet now And it's still round, but it don't feel right somehow It's a different planet now But we've gone, yeah, we changed it forever
That's Paul Casey, and that's a great song, Different Planet. Uh, what is your website, Paul, if people want to get in contact with your music? PaulCaseyMusic.com And that's on one of your albums, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 You did a nice little single uh, recently with Brona Gallagher, connected with our city. That's right, yeah. yeah. We, well, we wrote a song called Our Town, and we're always looking to kind of work and do... We were talking about doing an album together. So oh, it's, you should. We, we'd love to, but it's just getting the time. You know, Brona's so busy too, and I was away doing some things, but we did get one song down. And we tried a few songs of Brona's as well. So, hey, she, she she just came out of nowhere, didn't she? I mean, she I mean, I didn't even know she sang, oh, and then she's suddenly she's, she's she does an album and she's nominated for a Mercury Prize. Oh, I, said, I didn't know she sang. Oh, <laughs> That's she... like you know somebody coming out and like doing the trapeze <laughs> or something, you know. And, but I mean, isn't she great? Oh, and you two are great together. I, I mean, singing. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Start a rumor. Start a rumor. <laughs> but no, we definitely got to get that. That done, oh, do you, yeah. uh, John Deary? Say hello to the people. Hey. Tell hey, me, ab- tell me about yourself, and tell me about the band. Uh, well, I've been singer songwriter for a pile of years now, and last year we just started. Last year, I came back from doing a bit of traveling and yeah. formed a band called The Heads. So, yeah, um, yeah, just basically got together and recorded our first album last year out in France with the Frames producer David Odlum. Um, that went really well, and you know been gigging flat out ever since and just now we're we've got a few new songs down for the new album so excellent looking forward to getting that recorded now i wrote a book called heads uh, which doesn't mention you at all (laughs) (laughs) i'm sorry about that if i had known i'd have mentioned you (laughs) it's a tribute band for yourself well do you want you're going to do something on your own or are you going to do something with um, the folks here or what do you want to do i'll I'll just do i'll do do one of these wee ones i did um an open house festival gig last night, which was the the launch of it in Black Box. That's and right. That's right. I did um, a wee video for them with Will McConnell from Bandwidth, who does a load of a really good band kind of videos. He was great, mm-hmm. and this is a brand new one called The Raven, which I did with him. So we'll play that. Okay, please do. Quote the raven, nevermore will I come knocking on your door Cause it's been knocking on a year since we last met And like a withered old balloon from those endless afternoons We just deflated slowly till we'd both forget That we were once joined at the hip Another dance, another slip Into the comfortable embraces that we shared But in truth we'd both forget We found it hard just to admit That when we got too close The both of us were scared Oh But we'll always have that time When our thoughts were soaked in wine And how the evening light Just never seemed to fade In a colorful display On a never-ending day We were a carnival We were our own parade And I think I don't regret A single moment that we shared But I regret the fact These moments had to end And when we drifted far apart, we left some pieces of our hearts wrapped up in promises that we could still be friends. Now I wish you all the best wherever life may take you next And may your every day be filled with love and hope And to whoever shares your life may they always treat you right And give you everything your heart desires and more And I hope you'll think of me, but not as often as the sea brings in the tide to close another precious day. 
Because the memories that we keep should be the ones that let us sleep in peace with nothing but a smile upon our face. Oh. Someday we just might find another place Another time when I would pass you On the street and say hello We might catch up for a drink Another dance, another sing Along the beaches and the streets we used to know But until that fateful day I'll just have faith that fate will stay As faithful now to us as it used to be and I'll leave to you this song along with memories that belong now to the ages and the ever spinning wheels. Oh. That's a really nice song, isn't it? That's really nice. John Deary. Uh, have you have you recorded that? Uh, not yet. That's on the new album coming up. So oh, we're just we're just weighing up our options for oh, recording it. But that's a really nice. That'll do well. Thank you, Jerry. Cheers. Nice Paul, isn't it? Thank Great. you. Nice song. Yeah. Is, is there anything you want to do together? No. Get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. Okay, go away then. <laughs> anybody want? Hold on. We have time for just one. Uh, does anybody feel like doing anything else? Or Sorry. you know? Or, hey. Oh God. I don't know. You do one now. I'll. I'll you know. Yeah, Paddy. You yeah. do one. You do one. Uh, what key? And G. G. Oh. Yeah, go on for the hell of it. Yeah, go on. Just it's rarely you all get together. Yeah. Listen, thank you all for coming Thanks in. For having us. Thanks and for having us, and now this is uh, Paul Casey, uh, John Deary from John Deere in the Head, and Paddy Nash and uh, Dan Greer from uh, Paddy Nash in the Happy Enchiladas, and you can all be seen uh, next Thursday night in San Dino's Bar in Derry Soap Lot and Derry special gig. So, cool desks. All right, then. thank you all for coming in. Tickets can be got in cool desks. Tickets can be got. And cool discs and Derry Stoke London there. Thank you, Dan. Okay. Best luck in Glastonbury. Thank you. Okay, we'll do uh, works of art. Go ahead. Okay. It's very easy to follow. <laughs> The chippy fresh from the dolky good days He's finally got some work He's a good looking fella And it says so on his new t-shirt There goes Betty off to the bingo Hope she gets a sweaty Oh, she knows the lingo Eyes done No more smoky lights With a snowball in her Bike. She's going out tonight These are times of transition Everybody's on a mission We're living in a big museum Growing further apart But we are all individual works of art Skippy's by his bed Sneaks up like a yeti and bites her to a party all night. He's laying on the charm. And she knows she wants to go, but she thinks she'll let him twist her arm. These are times of transition. Everybody's on a mission. We're living in a big museum, growing further apart. But we are all individual works of art. We are all individual works of art. Oh, yes, we are. Betty, if two things 
things in common One, they're going steady Two, they've never been on a jet plane But that's about to change The credit union has sent them on a holiday These are times of transition Everybody's on a mission We're living in a big museum Growing further apart But we are all individual works of art We are all individual works of art We are all individual works of art That's one of those records that uh, don't last as long as they should. You did that, didn't you, deliberately? I did not do that. Look, you're so not. jealous today, you've nothing to do. I know. Uh, but I'll tell you what, I would like to thank you very much. Why? For embarrassing both me and Mo. Well, you see, if you don't tell lies, you see, I you don't risk lies. the you don't I didn't tell lies. I had, I had explained to Mo afterwards. No, no. See, I, you said you said to me that you were the first, you had already been across the bridge. And she said to me that no one else yes. has ever been across the bridge. Yes, but I was across the bridge. Yeah, but she said no. I know Mo says no. I know, but she but said Mo no. But Mo didn't know. Mo didn't know. No, that's why Mo <laughs> says no. And in other words, what you're saying is that you're not a liar. Is that what you're saying? I couldn't embarrass when you said to me live on air. I didn't want to embarrass Mo. How could I do that to her? It never stopped you before, uh, you know. I had to. Pre- you see, you're you're getting the truth out of me now. I don't want the truth out I of you. I pretend. I want scandal. I pretended to be a press man, and and I was given a press badge, and I was to walk across the bridge with a camera around my neck. <laughs> Imposter. Yes. I Hold on. Never impossible. mind you and your lies. So that's not lies. That's true. Tony D says we both need hearing aids. Jerry, please play the Galway fiddler for Henry McManus, who's working hard in the Downshire from Kenny, party hard at Dryden. Jerry and Sean, thank you for talking rubbish. Uh, if you want to see drooling over Rory McElroy, watch the clip of the old Jerry Kelly show featuring Rory. No, I saw that. That was very good. Did you see that clip from the Jerry Kelly show? No. It was on uh, the Channel 4 News the other night. No. Little Rory was about seven or eight, and he was chipping into an open washing machine. No, I didn't see it. So. Did you not see that? No. And Jerry was very good with it. Mm-hmm. That's good. Well, and, Jerry's uh, a golfer, you see. Jerry, golf, Jerry understood he's like you. Why is your show the only one I have to keep turning up to hear you talking and turn down for the music? You see? What can I say? Why did you not mention Fiona Bruce's nose when you talked to her? And was I talking swanky to that woman? You were. You put on a whole completely new accent. And people pointed it out. You became. You put on your Radio 4 voice and you were ever so polite. I you really were. You were you to were make over, them understand. You were me. over the top. Jerry, why can't you play some decent music? He plays music that he likes. It's a total joke. I really want to hear him read this text. <laughs> For God's sake, turn up the volume. You're the only show we can't hear. You see. Is that Jackie Fullerton talking through the common people? You see. Penny? You see. You put on a voice. <laughs> you're uh, uh. Nah, you see, you're just jealous because I called you a liar. Gavin Ewing's 40 today. I don't care. Oh, stop that. I don't care about him. Oh, well, a... East Coast <laughs> girls are hip, I really... There, I told the truth for once. I wish you'd try it sometime. 
We'll be back tomorrow. This is the end of the program as far as I'm concerned. I'll be back tomorrow. You won't be there because you don't travel. No. I'll be in the McHugh's bar tomorrow morning. And come on down if you like some good music. I'm not quite sure who's going to be there, but there's going to be some very good people. Uh, the, at the Open House Festival tomorrow morning, 10.30, McHugh's bar. I know it's a bit early, but you might be able to force a pint to start. I can't say pint to start. Do you notice that? Yeah. I'll be back tomorrow then. Goodbye. See you on Monday. I wish they all could be California. I wish they all could be California. I wish they all could be California girls. The West Coast has the sunshine and the girls all get so tan. I dig a French bikini on Hawaiian Island dolls. Wild.